Hello and welcome to Springboard of Virtual University. This is your most inspirational show and the point of convergence for the greatest minds. My name is Albert Okran, welcoming you on behalf of Team Springboard, led by Comfort. Springboard is brought to you by the Springboard Ratio Foundation in partnership with the Multimedia Group and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse, the enterprise group UMB Bank with support from the graphic business. So, for the past few weeks, we've been in the engine room with frontliners from various fields, trying to find out the what, the why, the where, the whom, the how, the tough calls, the tears that have undergirded their careers and journeys over the years. What you won't find in any magazine or story. We've been blessed to have so far Diana Hamilton, Israel Lai, Ajiti Anan. We've had Anita Eskin, Kwame Eugene, Father Campbell, and Ohinere Guti Auntie. Today, we bring the Queen herself into the studios here at Springboard. The name is Doreen Equia Welmina Ando. Doreen, good to see you. It's good to see you. That name. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Congratulations. Let's start with congratulations for receiving the Glitz Africa Women Excellence Award. Thank you. Recently. Thank you. After so many awards, does it get to the point where you say, oh yeah, one more into the bag, or do you still say yes when you get another award? Yes, I say yes when I get another award because God blesses me every day. And whenever it's another extraordinary blessing, I am grateful for it. So yes, I am totally excited. And it gives me such pleasure when after all these years, I am still recognized in the business. So I like that. Talking about all these years, as is my custom, I sat down <laughs> to calculate oh, gosh. to calculate how many shows you've done. I mean, we are we are thirteen this year at Springboard, and so for a weekly show, if we allowed for maybe two weeks in the year that we don't do a show, fifty shows in a year times thirteen is about six fifty shows. You do a daily a weekday show yeah. five times exactly. a week. If we allow for one year sabbatical. You've done 6,500 wow. shows. Wow. How do you stay motivated after so many shows? Well, like the Nigerian man would say, now God. Because oh. <laughs> I know for a fact that I don't do it by myself. I walk into that studio, sometimes clueless. I don't know what I'm going to do today. What I know for sure is that God would tell me what to do. Because sometimes I can go in there with a playlist and sometimes I don't. And I just follow my instinct and I just go with it. So it's not me. It's just God at work. Tell me about preparation. Are you able to tell how a show will turn out before you start it? No. I'm not a genius. That I'm telling you the truth. I can't do that. What I know is that I read wide, one. And so I probably understand the basics of whatever I'm talking about, so that um, I also would go online to research and find out about what's happening in the world in general, what's happening in showbiz world, i.e. entertainment. I will also um, pick out songs that I think, you know, the listeners will like, which is the difficult part because you are just playing to a whole group of people that you don't know and haven't met before. So satisfying them too can be very, very tasking. So I try to think outside the box. And sometimes I probably would have a list, but sometimes the beats that you hear in your head or in your ears actually inspires another beat. So then you hear something and you're like, oh, this one fits better with this. And so you change it along the line. So sometimes you will prepare but by the time you end, the list probably would have changed. When they say action, there's <laughs> something else takes over. What kind of skills do you need to be a good Dorian Ando? Is it listening skills? Is it musical appreciation? Is it a certain sensitivity to moods, ongoing national events, global events? What kind of skills do you need? All of that. You have definitely said it. You, I think you need to read wide. You need to have a strong sense of music, a strong sense of humor. You also have to understand what's going on in the world, especially in our world, the show business world. So we are talking about it with ease. And um, you have to have a knack to satisfy people that you don't know and you don't see. It's difficult, but we try and bridge the gap every day. You talk about our world. 
let's 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 break down the word cosmopolitan. <laughs> it's about having relevance beyond your immediate environment. Right. Being the word cosmopolitan, which is the name of your show, mm -hmm. means something that can be exported across the world. Right. Do you sometimes get people reaching out to you from different countries, or you travel somewhere, you meet somebody who says, "I listen to you," and you're like, "Even here?" Yes. You, do you get that experience? Yeah, I got that once. I was walking through the airport in Paris, and then a the lady says, "Doreen." So I turned around like a and like, voice. <laughs> she had a tip. <laughs> like, I'm like, who is this? And luckily I was talking to another lady from Ghana. She's like, oh, Doreen, they know you here too. <laughs> wow. I, I... And then I'm like, oh my goodness, how are you? And she says, I'm fine. I'm like, have we met? She says, we never met, but I listened to your show. And I probably, you know, know your face because I've seen pictures of you. So we had a conversation and she said she worked with Air France and then she was originally from Ghana and we had a very nice conversation, but it was a big surprise. And I was walking through a Costco in America one day and then a lady just stopped. Is that Doreen Nando? I'm like, oh no, not here too. <laughs> not here too, you know, but so it does happen. And I do receive messages from people in different parts of the world saying, hey, I'm listening to you. It's X A M or it's X P M and I'm listening to you and I'm enjoying the show. So I get that. In ninety seven you spent time in Columbia School of Broadcasting right. perfecting your craft. How do you feel when for something you've literally done for twenty six years, literally a significant chunk of your life, mm -hmm. do you get withdrawal symptoms when you are away from radio? Do you miss radio when you're away from it? No, I don't. You're sad. <laughs> the listeners, on behalf of your listeners, we are sad. Why don't you miss it? I don't miss it because I think it's break time. It gives me the time to listen to what others are doing. So I enjoy that time because then I close my mind to what I know and what I hear. So then I also open up my mind to, oh, what new things can I learn from here? So when I take a break from it, I enjoy it. Who do you listen to? Oh, I listen to almost everybody. I listen when I am in when I am in Ghana. I will tune into a radio station that probably so I just keep changing channels. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Let me listen to what they're doing. I mean, I listen to everybody, and when I'm outside the country as well, I just find I just ask the locals. I say, hey, what radio station is big here? It's trending. Exactly. <laughs> so then I tune in and listen to them as well. So yeah, I play I play around it pretty okay. What kind of music do you like? I like every kind of music. Reggae. I love reggae. Jazz. I love jazz. Country? I love... Country is the difficult one. Sometimes I can't relate to it. Wow. <laughs> but I've had the chance to play the country show on radio before. How I went through those weeks and months, I don't know, but I managed to. High life? I love high life. Hip life? I love hip life. How do you manage to blend all these genres? I know, it's all ringing in my ears. The only two things I can't really deal with is rap music, like hardcore rap, and I can't deal with country. Hymns? But Hymns. Oh, I love hymns. I love hymns. Oh, boy. You know, this is the engine room at Springboard, your virtual university, and my guest for today is the Doreen Ando. I have so many questions for her, and I will really <laughs> get inside the piston rings in the engine room, but you are just warming up trying to find out mm. the person, the thinking, what, 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 what gets her charged, and, and what gets her very, very contemplating, if I may use that word. Doreen, from the archives of Springboard Virtual University, the last time you were here was exactly 11 years ago today, wow. the 22nd of August. Wow. I mean, you can't believe how we managed to do I it. I know. It was 22nd August 2010. I remember it was a Sunday. Yes. And it's exactly, exactly 11 years Today, wow. to the day. Wow. And I asked you a question. We're going to ask you the same question again and see how <laughs> close your answer will be. And please, this one is not an exam. I asked you, what are the three greatest lessons you've learned in your journey as a broadcaster? The three greatest lessons. Let's find out if your answer is still the same. Okay. I've learned to be very patient. Patience, number one. I have learned to read and try to understand other subjects apart from what I'm used to every day. Reading and understanding, number two. And number three. I have learned more people skills. 
people skills. Or social skills, if you could call it that. Great. The last time I interviewed you, you were done about 15 years on the job. Right. Yeah, All right. Let me play you back on my phone <laughs> what you said 11 years ago oh during... Oh, gosh. <laughs> There's no contradiction. Don't worry. Don't worry. lessons. First one is humility. I know I did learn that from my parents, but this job has made, made me extra humble because you realize that a lot of people look up to you and expect you to be a certain way, but I realize that staying humble keeps you in the game. Yeah. So I probably would, would put it at number one, humility. Yeah. The second one, uh, this job has made me a more creative person. It helps me create things that I never thought that I'll be able to do. I never set out to be a radio presenter from day one, but over the years I've learned so many things that have made me acknowledge certain things about the person that I am without knowing. So I say creativity. And the third one would probably be respect. I didn't realize I was that smart. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Didn't you love your own voice? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, oh, sweet. I'm holding my two fingers together and I'm thinking, did I really say did that? Did say but that? it is the truth. So for I the benefit almost, of those who, didn't, yeah. those, who want to, those who want to get a recap, so, yeah. so, so 11 years ago, your three greatest lessons, humility, creativity, creativity respect. respect. Yeah. 11 years on, having done now 26 years yeah. and not just the 15 you had done earlier, you're talking about patience, patience, reading and understanding, and then people and social skills. skills. Yeah. Is there congruence? Is there a match between the two? Yeah. Tell us about it. I mean, being patient, it just means humbling yourself to know more and understand more. Um, creativity comes in when you read wide and understand what's going on and then you, you can do interesting things and you can actually sit back and create an exciting radio show every day. Right. So that works together. Is, is, it, is it a case that the first years require different skills and then as you, as you grow older, you begin to understand people more, begin, begin to get more reflective? Because I see a, a I certain so somber, yeah. somber, Selection, patience, yeah. understanding people's skills. Yeah. Are these things that you've built with time? Yes, I, I, I think they, they work like that together. Appreciating the people yes. around you. Yes, yes. I think so. I 100% agree. You mentioned, you mentioned not setting out to be a radio presenter. There's a story about the pharmaceutical <laughs> dory. Walk us through that one. I want to hear that one. Okay. Sometimes I feel like I've said that story 20, some 21,000 times. But really? I, I, I don't mind repeating it. So growing up, I was a tomboy. Climb trees. Oh, everything you can think Chaskili. of. Chaskili, football, gota to gota, everything you can think of. I just would do my jeans and t-shirts and I was running around. And then when I, when I set out to secondary school and started learning new things, I just thought, mm, why not do pharmacy when you get to university stage? My father was excited because he's a he was a pharmacist. And, um, I just, you know, so I would talk to him about several different things about pharmacy and medicine. And I like the understanding of it. And it was something that I'd look forward to doing. When I finished A-level, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, um, I had to write physics and chemistry again. So when I was doing my second world war, I was on my way to go and write my first mock exam to write the real exam, second world war. One Saturday morning, I got into a car accident and I broke my two legs. So, so yeah, so my whole school year, one school year was gone because I spent three months in the hospital. They put metals in my legs. Um, I had to learn to walk all over again. I recovered, came back home and went back to write the exam again the next year because I had missed out on one school year. So... Um, after I finished that exam in about mm, maybe May, I was at home, not doing much. And then 
um, I heard Joy FM start transmission, and I thought, oh, this is something interesting. I'd gone to visit my sister in tech just around that time, and um, she was doing tech radio, and we had enjoyed doing it together. Just in radio? No, not at all. Um, we have similar hobbies, and so hanging out with my sister doing radio was something is, is fun. Baba? No, no, my sister is Yvonne. Yvonne, Yvonne, yes. Yvonne. And so, you know, I thought, yeah, this is something that I want to do because I'd just done it one time with my sister and I enjoyed it. So I said, yeah. So I, I came across a friend who was um, working on jingles for the Joy FM radio. And I said to him, um, can you introduce me to these people because I want to try out here. And so he did. And then I went, to, I was invited to come in and um, talk to Dr. Um, um, Brigidia Chum, then, um, Mr. Tommy Annan Forsen and um, Mr. Kwesi Chum. And uh, they made me read some newspapers out loud, da da da. And then they said, um, Do you have an audition tape? I said, No, I don't. What's that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> we all kind of laughed about it. And then they said, Well, we like, we like to hear you read, you sound good, and everything. So come by here tomorrow. And so I went by the next day. And then when I got there, about 10, in the morning, they put in my hand a couple of, you know, pieces of paper that had the news written on it, and they said to me, well, you're doing the news at noon. You're so serious? I, yes, I'm serious. So I had to read it over and over. I can't count the number of times I read it, but I made sure that I was going to read this without a mistake. So just a couple of minutes to midday, I sent into the studio, they played the news jingle, and I had to read a five-minute Oh, no, it wasn't five. It was a 10-minute news bulletin. How did it go? It went very well. There was no mistake. I finished reading it, and everybody was standing outside, and they were clapping. I'm like, ooh. Right. And I was the youngest person there. <laughs> How old were you then? I was um, about 22. How did it feel? It felt good. I was scared. Tell I had... about the, the fear. Oh, no, no. I was, I was scared. Because I'm like, what if I make a mistake? Right. But I said to myself, it is your only chance to prove yourself. Did you didn't want it? I wasn't desperate. I was enjoying myself. I was young. I was looking forward to going to university. And I mean, this was all a hobby and a fun thing. But I just knew that I had to do it right. And so I did it right. And they said, well, come back tomorrow. Let's do it. So I went the next day and the next and the next and the next. And one day I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go, go do journalism because why is it that I'm trying to do what I want to do and go to pharmacy school? I have an accident. The lecturers go on strike before university starts. Why am I wasting my time wasting, waiting for lecturers? So I decided to go to GIJ. Wow. Do you think, I mean, they talk about serendipity, the hand of God working in all these things to, to execute a purpose. Mm -hmm. I know the accident is a very painful thing to talk yes. about, but looking Don't back, worry. would you say that it was the hand of God steering you somehow yes. out of those negative circumstances into a destiny? Yes. Now that I sit back and I think about it, I think God just needed me to listen to something. In as much as it, um, it, 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 it put my whole you know, education in a whole different realm, I think I also had the chance to get closer to God mm. because there are several things that happened when I was in hospital and I, pro I can probably just summarize. Please do. I would like when, to. when I was in hospital, I remember that um, my dad would always go and talk to the, the doctors and say, oh, when are you, you know, operating on my child? I was on a hospital bed for a whole month without surgery, without nothing. And my dad was always worried that, you know, if you let her sleep in this bed, the bones will heal wrongly and you'll have to break it again and fix it mm. when you are doing the surgery. And it did happen. But and at that time, I had a bunch of young people who will come in on visitations on Sundays and on Saturdays to pray with the patients. And through that, I found a certain belief. And I... I began to understand God more, and I said, even though I'm here and I couldn't write the exam, it's okay. It's giving me the chance to step back away from my busy run, running schedule 
and listen to the word of God and try to apply it to my life. A month after I had been in that bed and I still hadn't had surgery, I had a dream. In the dream, I was in front of this big white door and there were, there were four men holding on to the stretcher. And it just had on the door surgery. And then they wheeled me into the room. And then somebody in the room said, get up and walk. In that dream, I just knew that I was going to walk. I don't know how it was going to happen, but I knew. I hadn't had surgery. So I had one leg in traction and the other one in POP. I hadn't walked. I didn't know how the surgery looked like. But in that, in, in that, it wasn't really a dream per se. It was one afternoon. I was just lying there. And I saw all these things flash in front of me. So I said, is that God telling me something? But it just gave me that strong belief that I will walk. Wow. And I knew it. I, I knew it in my heart that it will happen. How? I don't know. But I believe that that surgery I was going to have was definitely going to be successful because I had seen it. How did it go? How did the surgery go? It was, it was fine. It was 12 hours. I had to do physio for about a couple of months because I had a stiff knee because it was lying in traction for a long time. You still have metals in your leg? Yes. Wow. <laughs> metals in your leg and a smile on your face. <laughs> you're an incredible person. When I go to the beach, it's too rust. I'm just oh! kidding. My dad they always used to say that. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I have it. I so, have my left leg. So, but this is beautiful. A beautiful story of faith, of tragedy, faith, and serendipity. Yeah. Tell me, Doreen, so you, you had an, a visitation from God, if I may call it that. Yeah, I strongly believe that. In which you were assured that the surgery will be fine, and the surgery was fine. What did it do to you as a person? And subsequently in your life, what did it do to you? For me... It just said to me that God has a time for everything, one. And two, when he tells you he's going to bless you, he will bless you in his own time. And when he says something, his word is bond. It doesn't change. You just have to have faith and believe. That's it. Beautiful sermon. <laughs> Have you ever thought about becoming an Osofo? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, I say I play around with it, but it's something that I, I hope to do. I'm trying to do that through Sunday school. And do, you, then, do you teach Sunday school? I'm, I'm actually going to apply for Sunday school. Wow. They just said at my church, Mary Mother of Good Counsel Church. Wow. Yeah, Some they just. Your classes are coming in. Oh, no, no, honestly, they just announced it on Sunday that really? if you wanted to teach Sunday school, they're starting lessons for Sunday Your class will be packed. So I'm looking forward to starting that. I'm looking forward to it. If you, I mean, I know you're pharmaceutical in history, <laughs> but if you didn't become a broadcaster, you, let me give you five professions and find out which one you will cons you would you would have been. <laughs> one mm -hmm. farmer, mm -hmm. two tour guide, mm -hmm. three singer, mm -hmm. four engineer, and then five fashion. I left out the pastor one, so I don't tempt you. <laughs> the only. The only one I probably wouldn't have done would have been a singer because I can't sing to save my life. I can really? sing in the shower very well. The rest, forget it. They probably will suck me. So that leaves out that the leaves out for I would have done. I would fashion, I'd, I'd farmer, gladly, tour guide, engineer, fashion. I definitely would like engineer. I'm scared. Maybe my mouth won't be up to par. Okay. But that leaves out three. That leaves us with three. Yeah, but farmer, I, I, tour I can, guide, I can, fashion. I can volunteer one. An investigator. I would like to do that. Honestly. Investigator? Yeah. What about it fascinates you? Um, I just like to dig up information. Not, I hope you haven't oh, dug no, out anything not, about me. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I just, like, I just like to find things, you know. And yeah. because, I mean, I like, I like to talk to people. And I realize that I pick a lot of things and I watch a lot of CSI, by the way. Oh, okay. that, that, that makes you uncomfortable. Classmates. Is, is, is curiosity a critical a success factor yeah. in your work? Yeah. Explain. Well, you 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 got to have it in you to want to know what's going to happen next. You know, and 
it's not only about the stories that we follow and chase every day, but in our everyday lives, we get excited about things. We're curious to find out what happens when this happens and all of that. So yes, curiosity plays a good, it's like it plays a good part. This is Springboard, your virtual university. I have the, the wonderful privilege of catching, let me use that word, <laughs> catching Doreen Ando and bringing her in the, the virtual university studios in the engine room as we explore that part of her life that you would never, ever find out in any other platform but here in your virtual university. She's told us a beautiful story. She thinks she said it over and over again, but today <laughs> she's brought a dimension to it that you never heard before. Is that correct? Yes. Beautiful. And when I come back from this break, I'm going to talk to her about family, motherhood, the grind, how to make things happen when nothing seems to be happening. Please don't go away. Let's go for the break and hear from our partners on this beautiful broadcast. Don't be left out. Download the Pulse app from the App Store or Play Store to mash up all day, every day. You can also enjoy more mashup. Just buy the new Mega Bundle and get 3 gigabytes data, extra 400 megabytes for your social apps, and free MTN to MTN calls every Monday. So go ahead, feel the pulse on MTN Pulse. Just be. We're good together. Everywhere you go. There once was a man who had it all. He had skill. He had charisma. He was loved by all. But above all, he knew the importance of helping others, lifting others up. He knew the importance of giving other people an advantage so that they too would use that advantage to help others. All you need is that advantage that sets you apart from the rest. And when you discover that advantage, life's challenges don't seem so daunting anymore. That's where we come in. Enterprise, your advantage. UMB was established in 1972 as the premier bank for the corporate and private sector in Ghana. From our very beginning, as the only Ghanaian bank serving all categories of businesses, we set a standard for excellence and innovation. Over the past 45 years, we've built a financially healthy and strong bank demonstrated our commitment to our customers and to growing businesses, and exhibited originality and innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we are poised to make a difference not only with our customers, but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future. Our future starts now with you. Welcome back to Springboard, your virtual investing brought to you by the Springboard Roadshow Foundation in partnership with the Multimedia Group and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse, the enterprise group UMB Bank with support from the graphic business. My day is totally made with Doreen Ando. I mean, there's nobody like Doreen. <laughs> Beautiful, just insightful and very special experience sharing the lessons of her life so far and i just don't want to stop this interview if you just joined us and you didn't take notes let me just tell you what she's been saying so far she talks about awards leaving her always grateful to god she talked about staying motivated reading research musical appreciation and humor as some of the critical success factors in her work her three greatest lessons were very special. 11 years ago, her top three, humility, creativity, respect. 11 years later, patience, read, reading and understanding, and then people and social skills. She says, with time, the perspective keeps changing. The fourth is about the beautiful story of tragedy, faith, and serendipity, and how God guided her out of her pharmaceutical aspirations into a world of journalism 
and the steps along the way. Very beautiful. I have some more questions on that one. And then <laughs> the fifth is about curiosity. She says she loves CSI. <laughs> and if she didn't become a, a, a journalist, she probably would have become an investigator. That's an, another interesting one. Doreen, let me go on to family and, and motherhood. How is it like? No, it's fun. It's exciting. Tell me about them. Um, your, your, your beautiful angels. I have twins, a boy and a girl. And they're fun to hang out with. They're learning to talk. Do they look like you? Um, this one, the girl looks like me. Wow. But they all have several other features that they picked up. So, you know, they're interesting. They're learning things very fast. We speak Fanti. And so they're learning to say words in Fanti. And um, they pick up words in English when they watch their daily learning cartoons. And so they try to mix it. So my son wants to say, brah, and come at the same time. And he says, mommy, bum. Oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> but yes, they're a fun bunch. The linguists will say that the children can learn multiple languages concurrently. So you shouldn't worry about the bum. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not worried at all. It will be fine. They yeah, will be fine. So, yeah, because sometimes instead of saying, why a show? They will say, Ado, mm. because in Ghana we would have said, Edo. Right. Yeah, so they, they're learning it. Right. I'm glad. Has it changed you? Um, in a way, yes. How old are they? They'll be two next month. Wow. Tell me about motherhood and how it impacts your career. Does it change your schedules? Does it put pressure on you? Are you sometimes on air and they send you a text message that the temperature is rising? Tell oh, me about it. Um, Luckily, I've had my mom and um, um, the lady that helps us, and so they usually don't give me panic attacks. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've had to reorganize my schedules, and of course, COVID has also changed a lot of things, and so a lot of maybe the side jobs that I would do are not as many as I probably did a couple of years ago. So um, I've managed to, you know, just change my schedules a little bit to suit everything and everybody and make sure that, you know, nothing is affected when I am not there or when I'm not readily available. Do you think that the critical factors for a professional woman and a mother at that include finding the right help for the children? Yes. Tell me about it. You see, because I've met people who's whose careers have stunted just because they couldn't find the right, yeah. the mother to come in to, to help, or the house help, domestic assistant, they just didn't get the right help, yeah. and it affected their careers. Yes. Tell me about it. Um, the thing is, um, I think that you're always um, relaxed and less confused and worried about what is happening at home. So, so far as you have people at home who are taking good care of your young ones, it gives you a clear mind and you are more focused to do whatever you're doing on the job. Um, for them to understand that you need concentration to do what you need to do, they also understand that when there is a challenge, they don't immediately call you and say, we're panicking, we can't do this, you need to come. No, no, no. So it's, it plays well together. If you, get, you know, if you have people who support you and your support systems are good, then you don't panic and you have a clear mind and you just go ahead and do your job without getting too many interruptions. When people are going to get married and they are praying, should this, I'm, I'm talking about women, should they spend time praying that God sends the right help when they become mothers? Oh, yes. I'm very, yes. very keen on this topic. No, no, no. It's very important because as, as we sit here, I have another colleague who has twins and she can't get her mother to help her because you know, um, her mother is not too well. We're trying to get help for her. And so I'm not saying that she's not praying about it, but I think that every woman should add that to her prayer points because they're extremely important things that we should all have. We can't do it all. But so far as we have support systems that work and are very reliable, we can go on and do what we need to do for our marriages, also for our work, and, I mean, all other social responsibilities that we have. Talking about prayer points, you've talked about faith. You've talked about a, a divine visitation. You've mm -hmm. talked about prayer points. Mm -hmm. You come across as somebody who has very deep faith in God. Yes. Tell, me, tell me about 
something that has happened to you that reminds you of God's hand upon your life? <laughs> I have so many stories. I can, I, I, can, I can actually summarize and give you a couple. So um, when I was traveling to go, I mean, to go abroad to have my kids, I, um, I, I had low blood pressure. And so I was worried that I was probably going to faint or pass out on the airline. And then um, I prayed about it. And I said, God, I'm traveling alone because my dad would have come with me, but he couldn't go at that time. And so I was like, look, um, I'm going to travel alone. But I prayed and I said, God, I need you to send me someone to travel with. Somebody who I know, I probably, because sometimes we're just lucky to meet people on the airline that we know. And, you know, I just needed somebody to be there so that in case I, I had any challenge, I could hold on to somebody's hand. My aunts and I, my mom, we prayed about it. You will not believe it, but that day, when I got to the airport, the first person I met was John Dumelo. He held my hand, he walked me to immigration, and he put me, you know, he put me to one of the immigration persons to help me out. But he wasn't traveling. After I went through immigration and I sat down, then another friend of mine who has triplets, I, they, I, seen you. I know. <laughs> they showed up. And I knew the kids from when they were small, but they were older now and they were going to college. So Auntie Doreen, Auntie Doreen, somebody was holding my bag, somebody was holding my uh, carry-on, and their dad was just watching from the back. And so God didn't send me one. He sent me four people to help me on that flight. Guess what? Where I sat... This family that I knew were just two seats behind me. So they watched me the whole time. They went with me the whole way to where I was going to. You almost described a really a really race. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That wasn't the end. Initially, I was supposed to have my kids on the 26th of September, which was what the doctor had scheduled, because it was this, it was... Uh, Yes. Then, a couple of days at the time, my doctor said to me, oh, Doreen, your blood pressure is going up. You would have to go on the 23rd. I'm like, if that is what you say, that's okay. But when I checked, the 23rd of September was exactly rewind, same day I had the accident a bunch of years ago. You're joking. No joke. Did the doctor know? He didn't know anything. He doesn't know me from a can of paint. <laughs> Check this out. Anyways, so my doctor friend who I knew from 37 military hospital who had worked on my legs when I had the accident some 20 something years ago was working now in the hospital where I had the kids. In the US? Yes. No, 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 you're he lying. Was, he's you're definitely now, lying. <laughs> no, let me finish. He's now a neonatologist pediatrician. And he is now the pediatrician for my kids. Now, no. when we talk about... Div <laughs> Are you joking? I know. I, 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 I can understand yeah. when, when there are tears in your eyes. It, yeah. It's during, you see... Now, when things like this don't make you sober, I don't know what else. I, 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 I share how you feel. I mean, yeah. you, you are in there, yeah. so you, can, you definitely are, are way ahead. But I literally can feel this moment with you yeah. as you describe this. All I can say is thank you to God. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, that's all I can say. Yeah. Thank you to God. Yeah. But that's... That's surreal. That's it's surreal. That is the exact word I probably would have used to. It is surreal. Have you changed from the Dorinando of 26 years ago? Maybe I'm still the same person, but my faith has increased some more. Let's talk to somebody who's, who's going through the grind, because this is a perfect time to speak to somebody who thinks their, their ducks are not just lined up. And nothing makes sense no. in your story. 
and everything seems to be against them. Do you have a word for them? I mean, do, do you think you can tell them something based on your experience? No, sometimes you think that a lot of things are against you. And sometimes you can tell. So how come this is not going well for me? How come I went through this and I haven't been able to, you know, get out of it? But I always say that when, when you pray, God listens. Now, when God talks, you have to listen too. You have to take time to listen because you have prayed. But the most important thing is for you to pray first. And sometimes you would hear him say something to you. It's, it's always good for you to listen to that inner voice. Sometimes we don't listen, but we have to have faith in what we tell God. Because in his time, he will answer that prayer. We are human, and we don't understand how he works. But he will turn it around for your good. Sometimes you don't understand how, but it will happen. And when it happens and you sit back and think about it, then you're like, ah, God was at work. Doreen, let's find out about your, what you see as your greatest assets as a person. My greatest asset is my family. Tell me about family. I've asked about your children. I haven't asked about your sweethearts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, my dad just passed last year, but Sorry, my mom. mom is still here. My siblings, my uncles, my aunties. I'm lucky to have five of them each. So five aunties, five uncles on my mother's side. I have one surviving uncle on my dad's side. And I have a large extended family. And I love the support I get from them, the fact that we're there for each other. They're all I have. If I didn't have family, I probably won't be here. <laughs> how, big, how big is family as a support system for, for some of the critical moments that you describe in your life? Um, thing is, sometimes I realize that if my family understands me and can understand and support me in whatever I'm doing, I can do a lot of things. That's pretty much it. My family members have been there for me. I mean, not only my immediate family, my parents or my siblings, but my other uncles, my cousins, my nieces and nephews, we all look out for each other. And we all build on, we all build on each other's strengths to do what we do by the day. And um, being there for each other has helped all of us. And I'm sure that my other cousins and my nephews and nieces and my aunties and uncles will probably have a big family. Oh, yeah, I have a big guy family and a big Fun fronty family. Fronty family from where? <laughs> Elmina. And then a guy family from? Um, Lantijawi. Lantijawi. Okay. Elmina and Lantijawi. <laughs> Strong. Talking force. about Lantijawi, I, I, I interviewed Father Campbell. Oh, yes. Uh, Father Campbell is my father, about, my buddy. <laughs> yeah, he talked about his days. At St. Rose's, oh, yes. serving for so many years, did yeah. he did he impact your life? Oh yes, a whole lot. I mean, he was. I mean, when I got to know Father Campbell, I was eleven years old. Wow! And so, he taught me a lot of things about, you know, Christianity. And um, being a Christian lady, and what one should do, and what one shouldn't do, and how to live as such, and. We enjoyed several retreats. We had one retreat we every. Talked about them very, very Yeah, fun. we had we had one retreat every term. That so three yeah. terms in one whole year. We'll have three retreats every year for five years, and then of course for seven years for those who right. came to six forms. So it was it was an awesome time. We all looked forward to it. He had many amazing stories to tell, you know, just to drive the message home and. He did a fantastic job at that. I mean, those who went to see Rose's talk very, 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 they, they, with a deep sense of respect oh, yes. for him. Oh, yes. How big is mentoring? Who are the mentors who have helped shape your life when you look back, apart from Father Campbell? Um, I have a very good friend called Phyllis Marie Christian. She's Phyllis, Phyllis Marie, Marie Christian. Christian. Okay. She's a legal consultant. Okay. And, um, 
I, I bumped into her, you know, a sheer coincidence. She knew somebody that knew me. It's like, oh, I want to meet that young girl. And from the very first time we sat and we started talking, we got along. She's like my big sister, my friend, my mentor. You know, whenever there's anything, she would look out for me and she would just show me the, you know, she just showed me the right way to walk and where to go and where not to go. And every once in a while, I probably would go visit her just, you know, to top um, from her some intelligence. <laughs> Do you find that there are also people who started out in your industry who look up to you and who draw the same strength from you? I think so. I've come across a couple of my colleagues who would come and talk to me. It's like, oh, Doreen, I think you are senior in this. What should I do? Should I do this? Should I do that? And um, I'm always glad to help. Is broadcasting difficult? No. I don't you think, think so? I don't because think you are good. So. Oh, I won't, I won't say that. I think everything, it's relative. It also depends on who is looking at it and from which angle you're looking at it from. But I always say that it's, it's like any other job. If you put your mind, your heart, and your soul in it, you can accomplish it. And if you're consistent, you can do it. When you talk about consistency, I mean, I, I, I've, I've met people who say, Charlie, I've gone for this audition, I've tried this, and I'm not just entering the door. You've, you've entered the door, stayed in, and stayed at the top for 26 years. Surely, there must be something that the others who are not getting in must figure out. I think they probably should be talking to the right people. <laughs> no, but I think you should be a little bit more determined than just, you know, walking on the periphery. I think you should put your best foot forward all the time, no matter which audition it is. And I'm sure that if you have what it takes, you would get the job. Outside your work, what do you do for hobbies? Hmm. I like to swim. All right. I read. I like to watch movies. If I get the chance, I travel. Um, I love to dance. Wow. I didn't say I like. I love to. Love to dance. <laughs> okay, that's a nice list. So, so, so do, you, do you sometimes dance behind the, the mic on your show? Oh, good stunts. It's, Standard it's, practice. It's like saying, <laughs> is the moon made of green cheese? Ah! <laughs> It's, it's definitely something that I do all the time, no matter right. what song is playing. I mean, I can recall just going on, going on and dancing and lifting my hands up. I, the lady, the, one of my producers was sitting outside and she was wondering if I was calling me. I was like, I'm just enjoying. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrow. I can stay silent. I must sing for his joy has come. You have a good voice. So how come you say you, you can't it's sing? It's a shower voice. Oh, like. no, 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 Doreen. It's been a beautiful conversation, drawing out for me the lessons of your life, getting to the engine room with you. And for the benefit of those who just joined us, Doreen has spoken about, number one, awards, being grateful to God for all the recognition. Number two, staying motivated by continuous preparation, reading, and research. Three greatest lessons today, patience, understanding, and social skills. Years ago, it was humility, creativity, and respect. Lesson number four is about serendipity. How God, through tragedy, navigated her life forward and the faith it has built in her. Lesson number five is about curiosity. If she didn't be a, a journalist, she would be an investigator. Lesson number six, very special. Motherhood is possible um, as a professional when you have great support, and I love that one. Um, lesson number seven is a divine hand. He talked about a relay race, <laughs> literally, of people that God plays advantage points yeah. on a critical time in your life. And even engineering for your children to be born on a particular day to remind you that, listen, if you forgot, Years ago, this was the day when there was tragedy, you could have lost your life. Yeah. But hey, not only do you retain your life, but you are giving birth on that day as yeah. well. That, that's, that's sweet. Yeah. Um, number eight is about your greatest asset, and you see it is family. Number nine is about mentoring. You talked about Father Campbell, and then also about your friend, Phyllis Marie Christian. And then number 10 is about your hobbies. You love to dance, you love to do it. 
Oh, I like to read. To read. I swim. To swim. I like to watch to, movies. And to enjoy life. Oh, well, hey, what else can you do? Describe yourself in one word. I'm just a fun-loving person, period. Fun-loving-person. <laughs> If you just joined us, this has been... need a word. Oh, <laughs> definitely. If you just joined us, this has been Doreen under sharing her, her lessons here in the engine room. Let's have that conversation. Which of these 10 lessons is your favorite? I'm struggling between the one about divine hand and the one about serendipity because they are cousins, first cousins, or maybe they are twins. Mm -hmm. One boy, one girl. One is called <laughs> Besua and the other one is called Besi. Besi. Just too sweet during your closing thoughts. Mm. Um, first of all, I'm grateful for the time you spent with me here. And I honestly hope that my story will inspire somebody because the truth is, whatever we're doing as human beings, don't forget that you gotta live your life in such a way that the other people who are looking at you would learn something from it. I see and learn from people every day, but let your life be an example too. I hope mine has been a positive example. I pray that you would also get inspired by whatever we've spoken about today. Don't lose it. Always remember that when you trust and have faith in God, he will never disappoint you. And that is Pastor Doreen Ando bringing the show to a close. And it's been beautiful. Sign up for that here Sunday school class at Mary Mother of Good Counsel. Is that the name of the church? Yes, yes. And, and be in that class and send your children there because she'll be a great, great minister of the gospel. On behalf of MTN Pauls, the Enterprise Group, UMB Bank, Team Springboard, and the Graphic Business. And of course, our friends at the Multimedia Group. My name is Albert Okran saying God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. Mm -hmm.